evening. I will call the meeting to order. Our Vice President, Laura Toy, will offer the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Welcome all to the 1,941st regular meeting of the Livonia City Council. This will be a voting meeting, and minutes of this meeting will be approved on April 4th of 2022 at the next regular meeting. Uh, we have our Deputy Clerk, Lori Miller, with us tonight. Ms. Miller, will you take the roll? Absolutely. Vice President Toy? Here. Council Member Barr? Here. Council Member Donovan? Here. Council Member Morgan? Here. Council Member McCullough? Present. Council Member McIntyre? Here. President Jolly? Present. The council is fully represented. At this time, I will seek a motion uh, for the meeting minutes of the March 14th, 2022 minute meeting. I'm going to warn the audience at this time. There's a lot of people here tonight who would like to speak on many different topics. It's important for everybody at this time to hold the proper decorum and respect other people as they're speaking. If you're here to speak tonight, you will have a chance to speak, okay? The time to interrupt people is not now or ever. Thank you. I'll seek a motion at this time for the minutes. Mr. Chair, I, I would offer approval of the minutes of the March 14th meeting without amendment or correction. Support. Thank you. Motion from McIntyre, support from Donovic. Any council communication announcements? Any audience communication in regards to the minutes? I see none. Ms. Miller, will you take the role? Oh. Vice President. Council communication? No, no. For the, regarding the minutes. I apologize. Thank you. Please proceed. Vice President Toy? Uh, yes. Council Member Barr? Aye. Council Member Donovan? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member McCullough? Aye. Council Member McIntyre? Aye. And President Jeff? Aye. The minutes are approved. At this time, we will move to audience communication. Anybody in the audience is welcome at this time to approach the podium on the side to address items that are not on the agenda this evening. You will be limited to three minutes to speak about any items that are not on this evening's agenda. Does anybody like to address council at this time for audience communication? There appears to be none. We will move on to council communication and announcements. Mr. Donovic, I believe you had something. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'd like to recognize a friend of mine uh, family, their Livonia family, the Geisinger family. Uh, Renee, uh, she's an active member in the community, um, and she's uh, unfortunately come into some really uh, tough health situation. She's been in the hospital, and and um, she's been facing some really tough times, and her family's been really resolute behind her. Uh, they own a small business here in Livonia, JB Tools. They do a lot for our community. And I would just like to uh, keep Renee, Renee Strong, is something that's going around our community right now. Keep her in our prayers and uh, say a prayer for her and, and the well wishes to their family and, and thanks for what you do for Livonia. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Donovic. Ms. McIntyre. Normally on March 23rd, we would be wishing our former mayor, <coughs> community leader and dear friend to many of us, uh, former Mayor Jack Engelbretson, a very happy birthday and specifically this year, a very happy 85th birthday. Instead, sadly, we are extending our deepest condolences to Jack and Sini and the rest of their family on the passing of their beloved daughter, last Saturday, Cindy, last Saturday. She was only 63 years old. Um, Cindy had, uh, had numerous health issues over the years, but with a great medical team and the love and care of her family, she overcame them. Um, unfortunately, she had been hospitalized for about six weeks and had a stroke. And despite excellent medical care this time, and again, the just unbelievable love and care of her family, um, she was not able to, to survive it, and she's passed away. Uh, memorial service is planned for 11 a.m. Monday at um, RG and GR Harris on Farmington Road in Livonia with an hour of visitation prior to that. And um, everyone who uh, knew Jack and Cindy, Jack and Cini or Cindy and uh, would like to pay their respects is invited to come. There is, I believe, the obituary is published on RG and GR's website. So um, our, our condolences and sympathies to the Engelbretson family. Thank you, Ms. McIntyre. Anybody else on the council? I see no one else. At this time, we would like to wish happy birthday to 
Mayor Ingebretson, our emergency manager, Brian Kahn, and our very own president emeritus, Kathleen McIntyre, uh, who will all be celebrating birthdays in the upcoming week here. Uh, we have new data on items 13 and 19. We will address that when we hit those items on the agenda. At this time, we have no announcements from the administration or reports. We will move on to the consent agenda. The consent agenda is uh, items 1 through 11. These items are voted on as a single item. This does not mean that they are any less important, but that they have been fully studied and require no additional study from the council. Can I have a motion for the so consent move. agenda? Support. <clears throat> We have a motion to approve the consent agenda from Toy, supported by McCullough. Does anybody in the audience have any kind of communication in regards to the consent agenda? There appears to be none. Ms. Miller, will you take the roll on items 1 through 11, the consent agenda? Vice President Toy? Aye. Council Member Barr? Aye. Council Member Donovan? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member McCullough? Aye. Council Member McIntyre? Aye. President Dowling? Aye. <clears throat> Excuse me. Aye. Consent agenda passes. We will move on to item number 12. This is unfinished business, a report out from the Public Safety and Health Committee from the meeting of March 9th, 2022. Ms. McIntyre is the chair of that subcommittee and will be reporting out on the matter. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, um, Chairman. Chairman, uh, Chairman Jolly. Uh, the Public Safety, Health, and Environment Committee met at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, March 9th, upstairs in the City Council Chambers. And uh, the committee members present, and I would just remind everyone and ask them to please silence their phones. Uh, the committee members present were myself, the chair, uh, Rob Donovic, our vice chair, and uh, Council Member Scott Morgan. All the committee members were there, and uh, also Councilman Barr was also uh, in attendance from the council. We also had our assistant city attorney, Leo Neville, and our planner, Scott Miller, and the additional attendees were Terry Seaver, Ron Emling, and Mike Fields. We convened the meeting at 7.01 p.m. The formal discussion topic was Council Resolution 18-22, which is the subject matter of developing the property located at 34437 Rosati Avenue, as specified in Petition 2021-10-02-22, submitted by Century 21 Row, with potential environmental and solutions. Um, I, I led the meeting, and we, the first resident concern that was addressed was the level of noise. The closest home measured from the far back corner of that home's garage, and so again, that, that's the point, the residential point that's closest to, to the proposed building, uh, would be located 140, uh, I'm sorry, 110 feet from the wall that separates the residential and the industrial areas. The petitioner's business is located an additional, or proposed business is located an additional 140 feet from the wall. So the minimum distance between the, the closest corner of any residential building and the proposed business would be 250 feet. The audio backup warning beeps of commercial vehicles, tow trucks, delivery trucks, et cetera, are designed to be audible up to a distance of only 200 feet. And that assumes that there are, that there are no sound barriers such as trees, solid fences, et cetera. The second resident concern of spills and groundwater contamination was discussed. The petitioner brought to us a storm sewer filter system that would be placed in all municipal sewers located on the property and also a blue sock device that would be placed around all storm drains to pre-filter any runoffs. Um, the petitioner said that in addition to being committed to all required environmental, env environmental rules, pointed out it would be in his own economic interest to, to maintain robust environmental protections. And we did have an approving resolution that was offered and the item was recommended to come out of committee and placed on the agenda of this evening, the regular meeting agenda, which is now March 23rd, 2022. Thank you, Ms. McIntyre. Do I have a motion from the council at this time? Mr. President. Mr. Barr. I'd like to offer a denying for the sake of discussion. Support. Motion to deny from Barr, support from McIntyre. Mr. Barr, would you like to kick us off? I would. Um, we've obviously, as Councilwoman McIntyre mentioned, we've had a lot of discussion over this. There was, I, uh, I believe, a public hearing, um, either that or a study meeting, I forget which one. 
and then a uh, committee meeting which she just reported out on and so we've had a lot of time to look into this there I, I do have some questions that have arisen on this that I would like to ask um, I, I don't know if the business owners here or the property owner or if, if someone's I guess I'd if, if the business owners here, there's there's been some new information that's provided that I'd like to ask some questions if you'd be willing to come to the podium. There he is. Would the interested parties come up to the podium, please? Please proceed, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I assume you want him to in, say his name and address for the record, or? Well, sure. Okay. Name Mike, and address, please. Mike Fields, 14310, 21 and a half mile road. Okay. Go ahead, Scott. Uh, Mr. Fields, thanks for being here tonight. So. Since our committee meeting, um, sorry, I lost files here. Give me a moment. Got stuck in Windows. <laughs> here we go. Um, I had a chance to drive by your location on Grand River, which, right? Um, I don't have the address in front of me right now, but um, 26120 Grand River, I believe you had said it was one of the addresses of your business, right? Up until February 22nd, we no longer occupy that space. Okay. Um, do you want to? How how long had you been there prior to that point? About six months. Okay. Um, I believe in each of our previous meetings, that's been the address that's been referenced. Can you explain what's happened that you're not there anymore? It was used as office space. It wasn't. It was not fit for storing vehicles. Uh, it doesn't have the capacity to hold any any amount of large amount of vehicles. Okay. Um, do um, was so one one of the things that's come to my attention is that that uh, that building has a notice on it that it's uninhabitable. Um, is does that have? Do you have any insight as to that? And did that correspond with your time there? The, uh, the business building itself is inhabitable just fine. It's a certificate of occupancy discrepancy because it was a addition to a collision shop at one time. Okay. What, when did you leave that building? Uh, I believe it was the 23rd, February. Okay. And I see that legal notice was dated the 22nd of February. All right. Um, because what, some of the concerns we had, and you said you were there for six months? Correct. Okay. So one of the things that I noticed when I was there is just the, and, and obviously when we're looking at a waiver use for a piece of property like this, you know, we're, it's, it's, it's a waiver use. It means it's, that waiver use is there on purpose so that council can have a chance to thoroughly review um, certain uses as they're coming in there. And, and so naturally, previous track record of maintaining property and stuff like that comes into play. When I, when I look at that property, the, the lawn out along Grand River is just absolutely destroyed. It looks like vehicles have repeatedly driven over it. Um, and it, this is more than just one or two vehicles. This is over a period of time. Was that that way when you were there? That's been that way for, yeah, well beyond before that. And to be perfectly honest with you, that property is not a good example of, rep of representation of uh, a tow yard. The, there's no line parking, there's no gate, there's no security, there's no fence. The building itself is probably less than 3,000 square feet. There's four to five different companies that occupied, that occupied that space at one time. So those, comparing the Grand River location to the potential Livonia <clears throat> location is not even like comparing apples to oranges. You know, if you want to go on a track record of our, record of our business, um, we had a leased property in Livonia about four years ago, and we maintained the certificate of occupancy until our lease ran out, and we had no problems with the city of Livonia. What was the address of that property? Three, um, 36130, I believe it was, Schoolcraft, right okay. in the back of the McKesson building. I'm sorry? Three, six. Yeah, and I got the address. I didn't yeah. hear what you said after that. Behind the McKesson building right there on Schoolcraft between okay. Middle Belt and Merriman. Um, and when were you there? 2016 to 2018. 16 to 2018. Okay. Um, so when you were at the Grand River property, you were using that for what then? If it wasn't a suitable property for your Off business? Office space. There's four different office spaces inside there. Do you know who occupies that building now? No one. Well, 
appears somebody does. The, there were cars that have been towed in that were all over the lot when I went by yesterday. If there were cars all over the lot, that's news to me. Okay. Um, There's a sign that's clearly on the, uh, it's been stickered, it's not um, for usage. Okay, right. Um, there, there are at least two other companies that are currently registered there. There's a right-of-way towing and a 10G towing. Are you familiar with either of those companies? Yes, we all see each other. We all saw each other when we were there occupying the business. Okay, but you have no relationship to either one of those companies? No. those are separate okay. entities from mine. Um, you said your address is 21 and a half mile road? Correct. And is that, what city is that in? It's in Marshall. That's in Marshall. And so is that your main address? That's our building address. Okay. So can you help me, not being in the towing business, for, forgive me for this might be a dumb question. If I was in the towing business, I might know better. But your your build, your business is centered in Marshall, but you're trying to set up a place in Livonia. Is that? I mean, the, Marshall's not exactly close. No, it's about an hour and twenty minutes from here. Right. That's, Marshall is no small distance between here and there. We ran our business in Livonia for years. We've been serving in Livonia, Farmington. Bloomfield, everything on the west side, Redford and so on. And every time you lease a property, you try to lease something that's remotely close to the area that you service. That's the reason we're choosing to build in Livonia. Okay, so what is out in Marshall then? That's our headquarters. That's where we do all of our billing. All of our accounts that are held with Jiro uh, and all the roadside assistance companies that we deal with. So you just have offices out there? No, that is, Part of the land is all, is used for office, and the other part is our home. It's a home okay. office. Okay, got right. it. Um, and then since 2018, you were using, well, I, I assume, I, have you just been using other local places for offices in addition to the place at Tamaroff where you've been storing vehicles? Correct. Okay. And we have a storage yard in Norfield as well. That's all the questions I have. Thank you for being here. That's all the questions I have at this point. I don't know if any other council members have any questions. Thank you, Mr. Barr. Council, anything additional? I do. Mr. Morgan? Uh, yes, sir. I, I just have uh, a couple quick questions. Uh, as far as uh, businesses that you own, um, uh, some information came to light. Uh, do you own 10G towing? I do not own 10G towing. Okay, whose business is that and how is it connected to you? It's yeah. not connected to Accelerated. Okay. How many businesses do you own? I own What's their names? Accelerated Towing. That's it. Okay. I think people may get businesses confused as far as people owning them because you may work together on an accident scene, but it's clearly in the notes or wherever you're following that at that I am not the owner of 10G Towing. That is a whole separate entity. Are you all set, Mr. Morgan? I am. Thank you. Okay, sir, is there anything that you'd like to tell us at this time as the petitioner? Uh, if there's any more questions, I can answer them. But, I mean, we have no additional questions from the council at this time, so I'll ask you to sit down. Thank you. Okay. And we will go to audience communication. Anybody who is interested in speaking in regards to this item can come up to the podium at this time. You are limited to two minutes to address the item, and I will ask Ms. McIntyre, our parliamentarian, to keep track. Yeah. Your name and address, sir? Sure. My name is O'Day Merway. I'm an attorney. My office address is 14339 Ford Road, second floor, Dearborn, Michigan, 48126. Um, I'll be brief since I only have two minutes. Um, I represent a group uh, that's involved, that's a neighborhood association, excuse me. Alden Village. Sorry, I couldn't remember. <laughs> Brain fire. I represent Alden Village, a group of concerned citizens here, who are here to oppose this uh, uh, mixed or a waiver of use. The reason being one of three reasons: pollution. We talked about the beeping. It was mentioned that the, the beeping should go, can only go up to 200, 200 feet. But a, a simple Google search, you'll find that the um, the uh, company that sells it says it's actually at least 200 feet. So it's it's a pretty big uh, discrepancy there. Also, there's talk of these sewer filters. Now, um, the sewer filters are designed as a Band-Aid. So if you have a disaster or something occurs that's very, uh, that 
oil is leaking, you put in one of these filters, you put in one of these socks as a mediation, not as a long-term solution. These aren't designed as a long-term solution. Uh, you've received a letter from um, one of these concerted citizens that outlines that, but if, if you're gonna approve this, you should know that this is a temporary solution that needs requires constant maintenance. We've heard from the owner who said that they, lit, they were uh, at this uh, facility for six months that was, from pictures, not well maintained. That's a track record, guys. If you come into a business and you're not fixing it up, not maintaining it, that's a track record. Here again, it, you have a, a property and an area that already is fragile, a, a groundwater basin that's already fragile, and you're adding stress to it. Even, uh, even at their best, these filters stop 80%. They stop only 80%. And Listen, excuse me, sir. Sorry. We're not going to do this. Excuse me? C proceed. They just wasted your time. I understand. Sorry. So it's only 80% effective. You're leaving 20% there. For a, a groundwater table that's already affected by poisons and uh, pollution, adding another 20% even is going to be a problem. You, you, these citizens have lived there for almost, they've had house, I've had a, a client who is 20 years almost from a centennial home. These houses have been there for a long time. These residents have been there for a long time. They're asking you for, to protect them, to protect them from any further pollution, whatever it may be, uh, whether it be audio, uh, toxic, or business. Thank you. Mr. President, Mr. Chair. Mr. Barr. May I ask this particular speaker a question? Sure. Uh, oh, sir? I'd like to ask you a question. Yeah, absolutely. Can you uh, just help me understand with this being an industrial sector that's over there? I mean, there's a there's industrial businesses throughout that area that have cars parked on them all the time. I think any one of us at any moment uh, or at, at some point in the life of our home has had a car that's been sitting in the driveway and we found some evidence of leakage on the driveway. I mean, I certainly have it in my garage. <laughs> I'm sure many of us do. Um, with, how, how do you perceive this business to be different from any of the other businesses that would be, particularly in the industrial section, when, it, when we're, our concern is occasional leakage from vehicles? Thank you. Well, first, um, for the one hand, uh, it's a 24-hour tow yard. So for the, with regard to the noise pollution, it's going to be nonstop noise uh, in the middle of the night. So it's not like any other industrial property that's around the area um, uh, because it's 24 hours rather than during business hours. So it's going to add to the both the noise and the hustle and bustle around the, the, the residents adding untold pro uh, problems. But uh, on the other hand, with regards to the drainage, these are cars that are, for example, the reason that I'm sure the question was asked as to whether or not um, accelerated towing is affiliated with one of these other com companies, which was admitted it was, by the way, they did say that they, he said he didn't own it, but he was affiliated with them. He worked with them. And the, the reason this was brought up was because in February, if you all recall, um, there was uh, a pile up on I-696 that uh, there was towing that was considered uh, predatory. Thousands of dollars in costs were charged. It was a huge scandal. Um, and I'm sure you all heard about it. Well, that was for these companies that are affiliated. Okay, with sir, this you're all set. Mr. Barr's question has been answered. I appreciate it. Thank I just, you. all right. Well, I had one more thing to say was no. that the cars are. You're are, all set, are, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. McIntyre. Uh, I certainly. Listen, if we keep having interruptions from this side over here, I'll call an adjournment of the meeting and we'll go take a break until people can be quiet. You have an opportunity to speak. If you'd like to, get up and get in line. You'll have two minutes to address us so we can see your face and we can listen to what you have to say. Ms. McIntyre? I certainly appreciate the comments of the attorney who just spoke, who represents the uh, property owners. Uh, I do find it very disappointing that we had a committee meeting. The reason, and we had no residents attend the meeting. One of the reasons that we have committee meetings are we go into a deep dive and it provides an opportunity for people to speak without the two minute restriction and no one showed up. And uh, we did receive information after that committee meeting from a resident who I know was unable to attend and we look into things after committee meetings, but we had a committee meeting and we had not a single resident there. And when an attorney gets up to address us, I, I would just like personally to remind the attorneys who address us 
that you're addressing an elected body, not a, not a courtroom. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. McIntyre. Sir, your name and address for the record, please. <clears throat> My name is Bruce Tenniswood, 34921 Beacon Street in Livonia. I live in the subdivision that's just adjacent to the uh, property that we're discussing. And I want to tell you that, that I am the one that could not make the meeting. Um, unfortunately, I crushed my foot the night before and couldn't walk. And uh, I elected to not tell a bunch of the other residents because I didn't want it to turn into, I wanted it to be a productive discussion. And I know all three members of the committee, I knew, um, I knew how it would be handled. And it was just unfortunate that I found out later on of some of the stories that were told to you uh, and that's why I felt like it was it was my place to clarify um, the information that was told to you that was just half truths. So um, I apologize for people not being there, but I um, I guess I was trying to not have it be a circus, to be honest with you, in, in a small room. But these people are all very very concerned about the situation, and I I guess I kind of hoped at the committee that um, that everyone would see through the lies that were being told to you. But this is, I guess I equate it like this. Um, imagine building a playhouse out of razor blades. And the reason that you would do that is because you've got a good box of Band-Aids. And it's just not effective. And that's what we're doing here. We're talking about approving a place in a fragile environmental landscape and just say, well, we'll be able to put a new pig product in and that'll take care of it. It won't take care of it. And then when you look at the way that they take care of the place that they're at already, there is absolutely no way that these products are going to be maintained the way they need to. I'm very familiar with new pig products. They're excellent products when they're maintained right, but they have to be maintained and that's not gonna happen. And we just please ask that you just please deny this and let's move on. We have given zero resistance to any development back there. Not one, you just approved one just recently and you got zero resistance Five from us. Five seconds, Mr. Tennis. But, but this one is, a no-go, okay. and we cannot accept it. Okay. Thank you. I'll go to her first. Do we have any other audience communication? Okay, seeing no further audience communication, the motion on the table is a denial at this time. Ms. McIntyre? I appreciate your comments, Mr. Tenniswood, and uh, I think I made reference to the fact that we understood there were some extenuating circumstances why people couldn't be there. Um, you're one person, and I appreciate you're not wanting to create a circus, as you put it. But there are a lot of people here this evening to address this issue. And all of those people presumably have access to the internet, to the telephone, to email, to um, follow committee meetings, to watch recordings of our meetings, to read the minutes, or to contact any one of us by email or telephone. And other than your comments or your information, uh, which was very helpful, well-researched, and extensive. I did not receive one phone call on this, so thank you. Mr. McCullough. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> um, when this was before us, uh, I think about a month ago, I did not support it then, and I will not be so supporting this tonight. I'll be voting in favor of the denial. A um, Couple things just to kind of clarify, the intensity of the proposed use and the hours of operation are inconsistent with the surrounding areas. Uh, the proposal could create significant adverse imp impacts on the neighboring properties. Um, the preventative maintenance that goes with these filtration systems that have been brought before us, I know one of the, the attorney did bring this up, it does require preventative maintenance. And just as I stated uh, at the last meeting, uh, you could, it's all fine and dandy if this gets approved as is, but how do we know that this is going to be maintained properly over the course? We won't. We will know after it's too late and there's an environmental impact. So for those reasons, I will be supporting the denial. Thank you. Mr. Barr? Yeah, uh, Bruce, sorry, you probably have a sore foot and I'm gonna ask you to walk again. Do you mind stepping up here? I'm gonna ask you a question. He was a firefighter, he'll be all right. <laughs> I'm just gonna ask you the same question that I asked the attorney because it is just a question that I think is legitimate that I struggle with. I, I fully, fully understand your concerns, but I, I guess I, I I'd like your perspective on why this one business poses so much more of a threat for the reasons you've said. You're worried about fluid leakage, and I understand why. Mm -hmm. um, but relative to the all of the other businesses that are in that area, all of which have many vehicles parked there all the time, all I'm sure, like any a variety of ages and a variety mm -hmm. variety of levels of dis of repair, 
Um, why, why, why is this so particularly of concern? Because all those other vehicles get driven in in the morning and they get driven home at night because they are drivable. And the vehicles that we're talking about here have been towed in because they are not drivable. And non-drivable cars are usually crashed cars and crashed cars leak. I spent my career on car accidents and I watched countless vehicles. These people told the planning commission that by the time they get there, the, the fluids are all leaked out. Fortunately or unfortunately, they said, they're all leaked out. I, I'm sorry, but I spent my career watching vehicles pulled up onto a tow truck and then they have to put a, a new pig product underneath them to keep the oil from running off the tow truck as it's going down the road. Crashed vehicles leak, period. That's the difference. Do you know, Mr. Tenniswood, and I know this wasn't your business, so if your answer is I don't know, that's totally fine, okay? But you're who's up here right now. The, the type of measures that we've explored with this business and what they came to our committee meeting and showed us, the equipment that you referred to earlier, is it typical, do you have any idea whether tow yard, other tow yards, do, do they typically put those kind of precautions in place? Because I mean, tow yards exist all over the way. We have another tow yard in Livonia. Right. Is it typical for them to take that level of precaution? I wouldn't be able to speak to that because I don't know, but I can tell you that I've been on very significant hazmat incidents downstream sure. from, rec from junkyards, not necessarily towing yards, uh, because I, I was never really affiliated with one exactly like this, but potato, potato, crashed cars leak. So I, I wish I could answer better than that, but I can't. Thanks. Okay, we'll do a last call for audience communication. This will be the last audience communication here, then we'll call the vote. Uh, yes, Ronald Emling, owner developer of uh, said property, uh, 34422 Rosati. Just to address a couple of issues that the attorneys have in the, in the general audience is having. Uh, we had a meeting on March 9th, and we, we thought that this was pretty much resolved as far as um, this stumbling block to get this bill done. Uh, Mike's proven to himself that he's a, he's a stand-up businessman. I want to address the issues with the, uh, the noise for one, and we talked about this at the other meeting. The little, be the little backup beepers that might go off from time to time in the middle of the night from a nighttime tow is no comparison to the train that goes by there 18 to 22 times a day in a 24-hour period. Now, we explained this to the meeting last uh, March 9th as well. That noise is... 20 times louder, and those, those sirens are designed to do a whole different uh, uh, noise and warning uh, than a backup beeper. There's no complaints about the train that goes by 18 to 20, 22 times a day from these people. My building adjacent to the railroad tracks, so I hear it every day when it goes by. There's the noise issue. The, uh, the issue with the, uh, uh, the filtration systems in the drain we went over that in detail. We went very deep in detail with that. With that's an industry standard, and it's it's a uh, it's a system from the pig that he, uh, Mr. I forget his name, just uh, announced it. It's, it's designed to catch uh, all kinds of solvent, uh, solvents, oils, antifreeze, and uh, uh, liquids from cars. That's what they do. If the drain, if the filters are clogged, the water won't drain. So if it's for some reason, it gets to be an oversight and somebody doesn't see, they forgot or didn't service the filter, the water's not going to drain because the filter's going to be clogged. It has to be serviced at that point. There's no getting around not servicing your filter. Your parking lot's just going to fill up with water. That's what they're designed to do. To tell the, the business owner your filter's clogged. Your water's not going to drain. Your filter's <coughs> clogged. So you service your filter. The system is an industry standard. It's a, it's a great system. And uh, with that said, uh, I think we covered pretty much the same stuff we covered on our meeting on March ten, 9th. Ten seconds left. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Thank you very much, and uh, appreciate your time. Thank you all. That will conclude audience communication. Ms. Miller, please. Mr. Mr. Chair, yes, I, thanks for your patience with me. Um, I want to say something. I need to explain something. First of all, I want to thank Mr. Fields for being here tonight. Um, and the concerns that I had, it's, it's so hard with something like this um, because you're trying to make decisions in a meeting 
with information flowing to you in the moment. Um, I will say that in the past meetings that we've had, I've been satisfied with his answers. In the, in the answers that he gave tonight seem to answer my concerns, um, but there's, there's further things I would wanna look into with that. I have more questions just related to the environmental thing. The noise thing for me is not an issue at all. I said that at the committee thing. I, I, don't, I agree with what was just said here. I don't see that as an issue with this property. We have the environmental issue, and then we have some concerns about what we thought was a track record of the business, but quite frankly, I feel like the answers we got tonight address that. I've got a lot of unanswered questions. I recognize this is a regular meeting. I hate to do this, and if somebody else on council, this, you guys can vote this down. I'm gonna withdraw my denial, and I'd like it and I'd like to put a motion to send this back to committee of the whole so we have time to further investigate some of the things that we've heard live tonight. Support. Okay, the two original makers of the motion are both in concurrence. Anybody else on council? Audience in regards to the change of motion? Ms. Miller, take the roll, please. President, uh, Vice President Toy. Aye. Council Member Barr. Aye. Council Member Donovic. Aye. Council Member Morgan. Aye. Council Member McCullough. Aye. Council Member McIntyre. Aye. President Jolly. Aye. The matter will, will be called out of committee again as it was previous. I would encourage any residents who have an interest in having a further discussion in regards to this, pay attention to when the committee meeting is. When we have committee meetings, they're upstairs. It's a little bit less formal. There's a more of an opportunity for a dialogue and things like that. Um, so thank you all for being here tonight. Please express yourself and let us know what you, what you want, but in the appropriate way and allow other people to speak when it's their turn. All right, with that being said, we will move on to item number 13, a request to waive the city's noise ordinance from St. Rafka Maronite Catholic Church in order to hold a cultural festival at 32765 Linden Street on Saturday, August 20th, 2022 from 3 p.m. to 12 a.m and on Sunday, August 21st from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. Is anybody here from St. Rafka's Catholic Church? Please come on up to the podium here. If you don't mind, I'll note that we do have uh, new data in regards to this matter. It's a letter from uh, the pastor of St. Rafka, Father Constantine, uh, giving us some details, and I'll note for the record that this is something that happens on a regular basis for the last couple of years. Mr. Chair, I'll offer an approving if you'd like a motion on the floor, sir. Support. Yes. Thank you. Motion from yes. Toy. Support from Donovic. Ma'am, your name and address, please. My name is Joanna Donowski. Um, I live in Farmington at 32808 Slocum Drive. I'm the parish secretary for St. Rafka Church at 32765 Linden Street. Thank you, ma'am. So you have an approving motion on the floor. Is there anything you'd like to tell us in regards to the festival? Yes. Um, the original um, ordinance waiver that we had submitted originally stated for just Saturday and Sunday. Um, our festival committee recently had a meeting um, last week and we would also like to add Friday night to that waiver as well from 5 p.m. to midnight. Uh, do the maker and the supporter of the motion? It's fine, Mr. Chair. It's fine, Mr. Chair. Okay, that's now adopted as part of the motion. Anything else you'd like to add? No, I think that's it. Okay, I think when the the father's been here in the past. He's mentioned that this is welcome. Uh, anybody from the community is welcome, rather, yep. right? Yep, the whole community is welcome, and most of the neighbors who live by the church um, come for the weekend. Um, a lot of them actually volunteer to help us as well, um, so they, they do enjoy it. Sounds good, thank Mr. you. Mr. President. I'm gonna go to Ms. McIntyre, because sure. I saw her first. Sure. Um, I would just like to ask you to be very cognizant. Uh, midnight's late for a lot of people, and I, I know that's what's been requested in the past, and I don't recall ever getting complaint after one of your events. Um, recently, another uh, religious organization in the city had an event, and they usually comply with all the uh, timing. They did not, and it was upsetting to a lot of neighbors, so I just say, and I've been to your festival many times. It's wonderful that a lot of the neighbors attend, but I would just ask you all to keep that in mind and um, to make sure that the, the band stops yes. at midnight. Yes, of course. You. We usually advertise um, our hours actually ending at 11. Um, we usually just ask for midnight in case something runs right. a little long. Yep. Thank you. Mr. Donovic. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thank you for being here tonight. I'm excited to see our religious organizations uh, hosting events again and, and welcoming the community. So thank you for that. Question, have you spoken to our law department or 
um, the ordinance department and put together a plan to make sure that you are conscientious of the noise and making sure that the residents nearby aren't affected necessarily? Yep, yeah, we, we have reached out to them um, and our festival committee is currently working on finalizing the plan and I've, I've spoken with the fire marshal and the building permit um, committee already and we're in the process of setting up a formal meeting with them with um, law enforcement as well. I'd love to see when government works that way. Uh, we uh, had a meeting uh, last year and uh, in relation to what my colleague, uh, Councilwoman McIntyre referenced, another religious organization and uh, they do a great job, much like yourselves, uh, but there were some residents that had some trouble with some of the noise and whatnot. So we'd love to have a good time and, and people enjoy themselves, but also be cognizant of, of the surrounding areas as well. So looking forward to attending and uh, hopefully a successful night. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you. Ms. Toy. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, just real quick to the petitioner. Um, great festivals, great food, great people, all of the above. Um, but as has been stated by two of my colleagues, um, we have had situations that people get really upset. And I don't want to see that happen to you because you've been doing a super job. Parking becomes, I know you do a great job at parking, but on the streetways, I, there were a few neighbors that had contacted me about people blocking the street at times and things like that. So you might want to pay a little bit of attention to that. Okay. okay? Just, Absolutely. We appreciate you doing this for the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any audience communication on this matter? There is none. Ms. Miller, take the roll, please. Vice President Toy? Uh, aye. Council Member Barr? Aye. Council Member Donovan? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member McCullough? Aye. Council Member McIntyre? Aye. President Jolly? Aye. The motion passes. You have your noise waiver. Good luck on the festival. We'll see you there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Item number 14 is a roll call vote, a proposed amendment to Livonia 21 zoning ordinance as amendment from the Department of Law regarding petition 2021-11-01-08 by Schoolcraft College to rezone property at 17950 College Parkway, formerly Unit 15 of College Park Condominium, located on the east side of Haggerty Road between six and seven mile roads in the southwest quarter of section seven, from C1 local business to PL public lands, first reading was offered by Mr. Donovic on March 14th of 2022. Mr. Donovic, do you want to offer a second reading? I will offer a second reading. Any audience communication in regards to this matter? Any council communication? Ms. Miller, take the vote. Vice President Toy? Uh, aye. Council Member Barr? Aye. Council Member Donovic? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member McCullough? Aye. Council Member McIntyre. Uh, aye. President Jolly. Aye. The motion passes. We will move on to item 15, roll call vote. Proposed amendment to Livonia Vision 21 zoning ordinance as amended from the Department of Law, petition 2021-11-01-09, submitted by Schoolcraft College to rezone 17420 College Parkway, unit 11 of the College Park Condominium, east side of Haggerty, between six and seven mile roads in the southwest quarter of section seven from C4, high rise commercial to PL public lands. First reading was offered by Mr. Morgan on March 14th, 2022. Mr. Morgan, you wanna offer a second reading? Uh, yes. We have a second reading on the floor. Mr. Chair. Mr. Barr. I'd like to speak to this, and actually the, it, my comments on this are relative to the next item as well. Um, so this is a situation where we've got properties that are owned by Schoolcraft College but are not zoned public land. Um, they're currently zoned C4 and M2. Um, and well, the previous one I made sense, that's connected to the rest of campus. Uh, it's next to another Schoolcraft building. Um, I, I don't have a problem with that one. <coughs> These next two are situations where um, I actually think behooves the city to keep these in their current zoning. The reason for that is by making them public land, when they're not public land, when they're in their current zoning, um, building projects like to go there would have to come before us for a site plan. When they're the, when they're the public land, uh, they don't have the same requirements. And just because of the areas where those sit and what the surrounding businesses are, I think the city has an interest in having a say in, in what types of businesses or what the appearance of the site plans of those businesses are, just like we do on a number of other items, including one coming up later tonight. Um, 
And, and I also just recognize that, well, well I, I will admit, I don't have the same level of heartburn over the, the St. Joe's Ford's Dome that I know some others do. I, I know other people on this council have expressed um, you know, frustration with that. And the bottom line is, Schoolcraft has a lot of freedom to do whatever they want to do, regardless of city ordinances. This is one case where a property that they own that's among other businesses is zoned in such a way that we have a say, and I don't see a need. They, they themselves have said they don't know what they want to do with the property specifically at this time. I don't see a need to rezone this now. I will not be supporting this. Or the next one. Okay. Any audience communication? M Mr. Chair. Ms. Toy. Is there anyone here from Schoolcraft by any yes. chance? Would you like to come on up to the podium? Um, you know, if, if there's a concern, my concern would be to we're rezoning, but we don't know what we're doing. It's kind of, you know, it's like we're blind on this. Um, help us understand that. Sure. So this is really administrative. Your, your name and my address, name's, please. My name's Kevin Allen. I'm here on behalf of Schoolcraft. I'm also a Livonia resident, 15929 Shadyside. Um, so for Schoolcraft, this is really administrative and cleanup issues because property that's owned by Schoolcraft that's going to be dedicated for school purposes, one, should be public lands. And then two, because we're our own unit of local government, we have our own autonomy. We answer to our own uh, board of trustees who are elected officials, mm -hmm. just like city council here. We have our own constitutional authority. We have our own statutory authority. Mm -hmm. So as long as we're within the confines of what's required there, it, this really is administrative and doesn't make a difference. So what are we trying to do? I think the one that's up right now is unit 11. This is kind of an odd shaped parcel. We actually tried to get this to a developer. That's why it's part of this condominium area that's there. And what happened is there was no desire for development. Schoolcraft is relatively built out. We've done a lot of work on the soccer fields that I used to play on as a kid. And now we're in a position where we're looking for additional space. The idea with this parcel, because it is so wonky and nobody really wanted it, so the developer is now giving it back to us, is really a storage unit, right? So we want to create a warehouse type facility that's going to look nice, that's going to be consistent with the area, but that we still have control. That's at least the thought. It's not binding. It's not written in stone. We don't have plans. We don't have drawings. We don't have any of that. But that's the mindset for at least this unit 11, and I can address the other one at that time too, if you'd like. Well, if I may, Mr. Chair, um, Kevin, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your last name. It's Aoun, A-O-U-N. A-O-U-N. Mr. Aoun, um, as you say, these are school related. I used to be a trustee at Schoolcraft College for seven years, um, and we started selling to Duke, that property that's on Seven Mile, that faces Seven Mile, where Andy Amos now is, and those big buildings there. That property has really come alive, and I'm proud of that for the college and all that. But certainly, some of that retail, I don't see how that's related to, to, to the educational purposes of Schoolcraft College. It certainly gave you guys some money and some land leases and things like that, and that's all well and good. But as we look at the further development of this property, there's some concerns of, you know, what exactly is going to go on there. I think uh, Councilman Barr brings up a good point. So. You know, and I'm all about school craft, rah, rah. I, I'd rather U of M right now, but you know. Uh, but no, in I'm all false. seriousness, sir, um, we need some explanation to that. You know, rezoning's a serious thing. It really is, believe it or not. You know, otherwise you wouldn't be here tonight. So, you know, if, if you could give us, you're gonna use it for warehouse, it sounds like? Yeah, so uh, n not set in stone, right? It's just the concept right now. There's no money that's been invested into the property. There's no drawings, there's nothing, right? We're just trying to figure out what are we gonna use it for, but we know we want it back into Schoolcraft's fold. We don't want it for non-school related purposes. And so that's why this property, right? This one is the unit 11. That's why this property is one we wanna rezone back to public lands. This is actually putting it back into public lands. It was taken out when we were trying to get it to the developers to make more economic use of it. Now that can't be there and Schoolcraft's looking for additional space. So that's why we want it back in public lands and for us it's cleanup. It really doesn't make a difference whether it's zoned. Um, I think this one is the new zone C4 versus public lands for Schoolcraft's purposes. It, it really makes zero difference from a legal standpoint how that property is zoned from how Schoolcraft's gonna use it for school purposes. If we're going to use it like we did on Seven Mile, mm -hmm. right, the air, or Eight Mile, is it seven? No. seven. Seven Mile, yep. where Andiamo's is, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, that property, I believe, is rezoned into commercial purposes, right? There's right. commercial zoning because it's out on a land lease for a long extended years period of time. Yep. So because of that, right, it was rezoned for those commercial purposes. Now this is schoolcraft for schoolcraft purposes, and it's just administrative cleanup to turn this into public. But see, your argument is you, you've, you've let that land go to a lot of other things besides college-related things, so now you're strapped for space. So whose real problem is that, vision-wise? Well, there has... Because you've got a Garden City campus. I don't know what other campuses you've built in recent times. Actually, um, we let's, were just... Let's all stick on the, on the point here for this parcel 11. Um, is your question answered, Ms. Toy? I, I believe so, Mr. Okay, Chair. Thank, thank you very, you very much. much. We're going to go to Mr. Donovich. Can I just address the Garden City one just for a second? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I think I can cut to the chase. You've sold it to Garden City. Thank you. It's got nothing to do with this now. Great. Mr. Donovic. Thank you, Mr. President. So let me get this, understand this correctly. Are you saying that your authority supersedes our zoning restrictions and, and our charter? If, if the city of Livonia. Is that I'm why sorry. you're allowed to have a sign on your building bigger than any other business in our community? Signage can be a different issue. Okay. Um, I believe that Schoolcraft has the authority. Let me give you an example from a, a, a Michigan appellate court case, just, just by way of example to help explain this. There is a Michigan Department of Corrections case where they wanted to build, for lack of a better term, a halfway home or a rehab facility in the city of Detroit in a residential area. <clears throat> Fully against zoning purposes to have that, Court of Appeals came in and said, no, they're their own local unit of government, just like Schoolcraft is. They have the authority and the jurisdiction over theirs, unless there is a superseding statute that explicitly addresses that issue. Here, there's not. You all sent Mr. Thank you, Mr. President. Anybody from the audience like to address this further? I see none. Mr. Chair. Oh. I'm trying to move the meeting <laughs> along, but um, Mr. McCullough, Mr. Morgan, who is yeah, yes. Both? Uh, yes, sir. I have uh, a question for you, and I, I'm not sure myself, so I'm, I'm asking. Uh, so, as a um, as it currently sits, does Schoolcraft pay the city taxes on this? No. No. Okay. So, does, so does this is not change? a this is not a tax thing where it gets switched over to public lands and then they don't have to pay taxes. As commercial use, it would have they'd have to pay taxes, correct? If it was being used for commercial purposes, not owned by Schoolcraft, yes, there would be taxes. Ever since this property was returned to Schoolcraft's possession and control, there have been no taxes generated. So this is a tax neutral change. Okay, thank you. Mr. McCollum. Thank you, President Jolly. Uh, just, I'm looking at <clears throat> this postage size item as it sits as uh, item, what is it, item uh, 15. Um, this is 11. 11. Whoops, whatever, I'm way off on that. But the way it sits, I do agree that this is probably more of an administrative. I don't see that this little postage sized piece of, of land is going to impact uh, the city. However, if this was something in the past that could have some, some teeth to it, I might think differently. Um, but everything you're saying, I don't see it being a big problem, um, at least for this specific item. Um, and I, I don't, it, see, again, you said this is more paperwork and cleaning up. It butts up the PL. Uh, I don't see any issue. I'll be supporting it. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Mr. Barr. Just, I, I won't reiterate what I said earlier, just a couple points after hearing the comments. First of all, there's nothing about keeping this in this current zoning that keeps it at Schoolcraft College from using this for educational purposes. The next item is the item on Merriman Road, which is that exact situation where it's zoned M4 and they're using it for educational purposes. So this does not need to be rezoned for them to do that. And I will just, again, reiterate that we have a great example in the St. Joe Sports Dome about what happens when Schoolcraft does what Schoolcraft does and doesn't have to come before the city of Livonia. I am all in favor of whatever Schoolcraft, you know, I, I assume I'm in favor of what plans they would have for this property. I'm sure it will be fine. I just don't see a reason for us to return this to public land when right now it's in a zoning that allows us to have a say in the site plan. Thanks. Ms. Miller, will you take the roll, please? Vice President Toy. Uh, Council Member Barr. So it's an approving that we're talking about right now, right? It's because he offered second it's reading. It's a second read of second it. Second reading wasn't given yet, was it? They Mr. He, he gave Mr. Second Mr. Morgan reading. gave second reading to get us started. So we're essentially voting on approving, right? Yes. Okay. Second reading functions as an approving. Do you want to confirm that that was Ms. Toy's vote before I vote? 
if it is, do you wish to do you wish to approve the zoning change or do you wish to deny the zoning change? I would like to, to go to committee of the whole. If uh, we could that's do not that. the mo that's not the motion on the table, though. No, that's too bad. Um, I'm going to say no. Got that, Miss Miller? Yes. Council Member Barr. No. Council Member Donovic. No. Council Member Morgan. No. Council Member McCullough. Aye. Council Member McIntyre. Aye. President Jolly. No. The request to change the zoning for Unit 11 of College Park Condominium fails. We'll move on to item number six. This is also a roll call vote, proposed amendment to Livonia Vision 21 zoning ordinance from the Department of Law, petition 20211110110, submitted by Schoolcraft College to rezone property at 13001 Merriman Road, located on the west side of Merriman Road between Glendale and Schoolcraft Roads, in the northwest quarter of section 27 from M2, General Manufacturing to PL Public Lands. First reading was given by Mr. Morgan on March 14th of 2022. Mr. Morgan, would you like to offer a second reading? Uh, yes, the same. Okay, anybody from the council have anything to say on this matter? Ms. McIntyre? Um, on this one, I am, I am not inclined to support this. I supported the last one because of where the location was uh, to the point that my colleague Mr. Barr made earlier, nothing about the current zoning precludes Schoolcraft from doing what you've done there, which is placing your new outstanding manufacturing center, which I've had the opportunity to see. It's a phenomenal uh, facility and um, gives you the space you needed to expand that program. Um, however, if we return this to PL, and, and this, is a, this is a stretch that is not adjacent to the Schoolcraft property, the city loses all control of what goes here, including signage. And um, for that reason, I, I am not supportive of this. Thank you. Anybody else on the council? Seeing none, would you like to address this, sir? Um, unless there's specific questions. I okay. think we've had the discussion, so. Thank you, sir. Any audience communication? We have somebody approaching the podium. Please state your name and address for the record, sir. Steve Kaufman, uh, 18,600 Haggerty, Livonia. I'm the Chief Operations Officer for the college. I wasn't, uh, I didn't have any prepared remarks or anything, but I just wanted to correct uh, one of the statements from uh, Member McIntyre that uh, it's not adjacent, this particular building is not adjacent to Schoolcraft property. It actually is adjacent to our Public Safety Training Center. It actually backs up to it. Although the address is on Merriman Road, uh, the back fence, which we, uh, we have access to our 13-acre driving pad back there. So I just wanted to clarify a point. Ms. Mm -hmm. McIntyre. Uh, thank you for that correction. I, I, I misspoke. Um, it's not adjacent to your main campus as the other parcel is. I, I'm aware of its adjacency to the public safety facility. Correct. We have three campuses, and right. that's, that's one of them. Right. So thank you for that clarification, and I misspoke. So thank you. I appreciate that. Any other audience communication? Seeing none, Ms. Miller, take the roll. Vice President Toy? Aye. Council Member Barr? No. <clears throat> Council Member Donovic? No. Council Member Morgan? No. Council Member McCullough? No. Council Member McIntyre? No. President Jolly? Aye. The motion fails. This item will also not be rezoned. We'll move on to item number 17, roll call proposed amendment to Livonia Vision 21. As amended from the Department of Law, petition 20210701106, submitted by LAG Development to rezone property at 34801 Plymouth Road, located on the south side of Plymouth Road between Stark and Wayne Roads in the northwest quarter of section 33 from C1 local business to C2 general business, first reading given by Mr. Barr on October 18, 2021. Mr. Barr, would you like to offer a second reading? I will offer a second reading. Okay, anybody on the council like to address this matter? Mr. Donovic? Thank you, Mr. President. I'm excited to see this uh, go through. Uh, unfortunately, the donut uh, shop had to close down years ago. I was a big fan of it. I uh, often would go to the Burger King next door, um, but uh, unfortunately, that the business is long, no longer there, and 
Now, uh, La Fontaine has been a good partner here and working with the city and uh, coming to the city for approvals and, and being a good steward and partner with us. And I appreciate that partnership and working with us. Um, and I look forward to seeing this as a successful business and tearing down an old building and, and uh, uh, adding some nice landscaping and making it vibrant, a vibrant neighborhood right there. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Donovic. Anybody from the audience? Seeing none, Ms. Miller, will you take the roll? Vice President Toy? Aye. Council Member Barr? Aye. Council Member Donovic? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Excuse Member me. McCullough? Aye. Council Member McIntyre? Aye. President Jolly? Aye. The motion passes. We'll move on to 18. Waiver petition from the Planning Commission regarding petition 2022-010201. Submitted by LAG Development requesting waiver use approval to demolish the existing commercial building and use property for storage and display of vehicles in connection with an automotive dealership, La Fontaine Hyundai of Livonia, 34801 Plymouth Road, located on the south side of Plymouth Road between Stark and Wayne, northwest quarter of section 33. Same piece of property as 17 here. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion support. for Toy, support from McCullough. Any comments from the council? Mr. Chair. Ms. Toy. I think it's been said about the donut shop, but this really helps Plymouth Road. I appreciate LaFontaine coming in and, and um, sprucing up Plymouth Road. We need, we need a lot of help down, quite frankly, on Plymouth Road. I own a business down that way, and um, we, I really welcome you to do whatever you can to your buildings, and you always do a fine job, it seems. I think you actually own the auto world, uh, LaFontaine. So. <laughs> I, um, I'm not trying to be facetious, but it seems like you've really expanded, and I appreciate you coming to Livonia and doing that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Toy. Any communication from the audience? There's none. Ms. Miller, take the roll, please. Vice President Toy? Aye. Council Member Barr? Aye. Council Member Donovic? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member McCullough? Aye. Council Member McIntyre? Aye. President Jolly? Aye. The motion passes. Moving on to number I, number 19, rezoning petition, planning commission. There's a, there's a there's part B. Two. Oh, I'm sorry. There's two resolutions. Do I have a motion for part B? Is there a second motion? So, uh, so moved. I'll move for approval. Is Toy supporting that? Yes, please. Okay. Motion by McIntyre, support by Toy. <laughs> Any council communication? Seeing none, audience, none. Ms. Miller, take the roll. Vice President Toy? Aye. Council Member Barr? Aye. Council Member Donovic? Aye. Council Member Morgan? Aye. Council Member McCullough? Aye. Council Member McIntyre? Aye. President Jolly? Aye. Motion for Part B also passes. Now on to 19. Rezoning petition from the Planning Commission. Petition 2020-080106 submitted by Middlebelt Plymouth Venture LLC to rezone parts of the properties at 29707 and 30273 Plymouth Road located on the south side of Plymouth Road between Middlebelt and Milburn Avenue in the northeast quarter of section 35 from C2 General Business to NM2 Neighborhood Multifamily. A public hearing on this matter was held on Monday, March 7, 2022. Do I have any motions from the council? To get this item moving, I will move approval. Support. We have a, approving for purposes of discussion from McIntyre, support from Barr. Council comments? Mr. Chair. Ms. Toy. I think um, a lot of comments were made already at um, the public hearing. That's not to preclude anyone getting up to the microphone. There's obviously um, a lot of concern about this particular site and the property itself um, in regards to what is being proposed there. I think that uh, um, the proposed um, folks that are the petitioners <coughs> have done some good things in our community. I'm not so sure I can support this for where it's at and how it affects our neighborhoods and our taxpayers there. So I will not be supporting it tonight. Um, and I'm hoping others might look into their hearts and souls and realize if they live there, would they want that staring down at them? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Toy. I'll note for the record here, the item before the council tonight is not a binding uh, 
substantive motion, but rather a motion to refer this matter to the law department to prepare language of an ordinance that we would vote on in the future. Mm -hmm. That's all this does at this time is request the law department to draft language that would be voted on in the future, and that future vote would be determinative and substantive in this matter. Anybody else in the council? Chair. Mr. Barr. Uh, I unfortunately was not able to be hearing on this, so I just want to make a few comments. Uh, I had a family commitment that night, but um, I, I've obviously, this has been a, a known petition for a long time. I've been following along, you know, through news and social media and things, um, you know, going back to at least last summer, I think, and knew this would be coming before us eventually. So there's been a lot of time to think about this. In that time, um, I, I've seen, you know, a lot of concerns expressed, and with this latest proposal, um, I think a lot of those concerns have been addressed. Um, I, uh, President Jolly, I, I appreciate your comment about what this being on zoning, so I will try to limit my comments here about what's been proposed because there will be site plan that comes later. And I, I, the neighbors probably know this by now because this has been through so many meetings, but if this were to pass tonight, or, or pass, if it were to move forward, it would just be with a first reading and then there'd be a second reading of vote on the rezoning and then we still have to approve the site plan. So. Um, I know the petitioner has done a lot of work with the site plan already in order to help this discussion, but it is just a zoning tonight. So as it relates to zoning, um, you know, this property obviously has been commercial for a long, long time. It's been intended to be commercial, but it's also been, this particular property has been undeveloped for 15 years and it's been undeveloped for a reason, um, probably multiple reasons. But one of the things, we've talked about this even as we talked about um, the, the big change to our zoning ordinance recently, um, that one of the things we're going to have to deal with as a city and all municipalities are going to have to deal with going forward is there's just not the need for retail zoning that there used to be. Um, we, we all are familiar with the reasons why that is, but we're, we're going to continually face this issue as a city where we've got properties zoned as retail that it's difficult to fill, and, and I think this is one of those. Um, so I understand where the, where the owner of the property is coming from in, in looking for alternatives. I will also note from a zoning perspective, I, I, I know the concerns with this being, you know, going to a neighborhood multifamily. Um, look, anytime, we've said this before and you all know this, anytime there's a development, the neighbors are always concerned. That's not to, that's not to minimize that. It's that their concerns are valid and, and it's a huge factor in our decision making, but it's, but it's one factor. And, um, and, and then when you're talking about this type of zoning, I'm very, very familiar with the, with the concerns with that, okay? In this case, what's been proposed, there is literally a football field of distance, literally a football field, it's 100 yards, between what they're proposing for this building and the neighborhood behind. We're talking about, they're, they're talking about putting a vinyl fence on top of a berm, um, you know, the, the sight lines have been addressed. And the alternative, if they were able to fill this with commercial property, I think for the neighbor's sake, the alternative, which is another commercial property like a Walmart or a Target, I actually think is way more intrusive to the neighborhood than, than what this is. Um, and, and frankly, your comments on that make that case uh, based on your complaints about Walmart and Target. So for those reasons, and looking at the zoning tonight, I'm, I'm willing to move this forward and continue to have this discussion um, based on what's been provided to us. Thanks. Anybody else on the council? Ms. McIntyre? Um, I'm not going to echo everything that Mr. Barr just said. He said it very well. But I am going to support this going to law for a rezoning because I understand the concerns with apartments, and I think anybody who's followed this council knows the, the due diligence we do on approving multifamily uh, units. I agree 100% with Mr. Barr that a multifamily, the right multifamily development, is a much um, lower intensity of use than another big box store. And I also do not think that what we have there right now, which is really a very unattractive uh, piece of property, is, helps, that, um, helps that development, helps the neighborhood around it. So I am going to support moving this forward. Again, with a reminder, this is not approval of the site plan or the specific uh, property that's going in there. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Anybody else in the council? Mr. Morgan? Yes, I just wanted to say that um, I, I spent a lot of time talking to the residents in that community, and uh, your voices have been heard, and I am not going to be in support of this at this time. So that's it. Mr. President. Mr. Donovic, 
Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, typically, I'd like to wait until further down the line in the process to talk at great lengths about this, but I'll try to keep my comments short for tonight. Uh, I am going to support this, uh, this potential rezoning to go through to the law department and draft documents. Um, some of my colleagues echo that I think it is more intrusive, a commercial building 100 feet away from backyards than a multifamily 300 feet away from, from the backyards. Um, I want to see innovative developments in our area. Quite frankly, I ran on the revitalization of the east side of Livonia. This is a $30 million potential project as opposed to another big box store that could be vacant within the next 10 to 15 years. Um, I want to see more housing availability in Livonia. People want to come to Livonia and people want to spend money to live in our community. I think this isn't your typical apartment complex that is uh, sometimes a negative connotation with them. I think this is a very nice apartment complex. Quite frankly, it mimics exactly the apartment complex over on Eight Mile and Haggerty area, and it's beautiful, and, and that's almost fully leased. It's been less than a year, and almost all 200 units are leased at almost $2,000 a month. People want to come to Livonia, and they want to live in our city. They won't necessarily always want to purchase a home, but they want to live in Livonia. I just think that uh, another big box store is just going to be more intrusive on residents 100 feet away with semi-trucks coming and going, uh, backing into loading docks all night long throughout the day. If you look at the, the traffic volume from commercial buildings, I'm no engineering expert, but I'd say that there's more vehicles that come and go from a commercial complex like a Walmart, like a Target on a daily basis than a uh, residential multifamily neighborhood. There's gonna be about 200 people there, give or take, with their residents, with their friends and family that come there, as opposed to a commercial big box store that there's hundreds, if not thousands of people that travel through that store on a daily to weekly basis. So I'm gonna to support tonight, but I'm gonna to continue to uh, communicate with residents, continue to communicate with the petitioners. Um, this is a long process, and I think there's a lot of good that can be done throughout this process through the site plan. And uh, I do thank everybody that reached out and, and emailed me and phone calls and, and continue to be accessible if anybody would like to talk to me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Donovic. Mr. McCullough. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, this one we've seen, you know, for a, a lot of times over the last year, pretty much. Um, and I appreciate the developer for bringing all the plans forward. Um, I still struggle with this specific development, uh, creating harmony in the area. Um, that's what our master plan was, was meant for. Um, I don't see this specific plan being conducive to creating harmony with the, the surrounding businesses and even the homes behind. For that reason, I will not be supporting this. Thank you. So at this point, we have an approving motion on the floor to send this matter to the Department of Law to draft an ordinance. Like I said, that is not a substantive vote. It would just refer it to law. They would bring back an ordinance change that would come before us. At that time when it was before us, it would require a first reading. No votes would be taken at that time. At a subsequent meeting after that one, a second reading would take place. It has been the tradition of the Livonia City Council that Second readings on zoning changes in cases like this do not take place until we have a site plan to go along with it so we can consider the entire package all together at one time. It would be two items, but side by side, so we knew exactly what we were looking at. With that being said, audience communication, anybody who would like to address the council in regards to this matter, come on up to the podium. You are limited to two minutes. I'll ask you to start off by stating your name and address. We do have the petitioners here tonight. Uh, like I did in the past, I'll ask you to keep track of the comments that are made. I'll ask you to come up at the end and address anything that you would like to at that time. Yeah. Um, it's also a good idea here for all of our sake of uh, time and sanity. If you would like to speak on this matter, if you're planning on speaking, please start to come on to this side of the room to be ready so we can go uh, in an orderly queue here, okay? Good evening, sir. Your name and address, please. Peter Shemshock, 9950 Oporto. <clears throat> I just want to reiterate, there's some council people that weren't here last time about the rat issue we currently have. Uh, since then, Showstack last time said they would plan on four to six dumpsters, I believe, on a 200-unit complex. I went around and looked at other complexes. It's every 12 units, there's a dumpster. Their response to that was, uh, I think they would empty them 
once a day or every other day. I don't know of any complex that does that. It's not cost effective. Um, being 200 units, I would estimate an average of 400 people living there that would have a driver's license. I believe Shostek said last time that the, uh, at the time people would leave would be between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. On an optimum day, there'd be 133 vehicles added to the current traffic that's there between six and nine every hour to go through that area. That's a lot of vehicles added to, to the traffic we have now. If you had a big box store, it'd be the same people going to Walmart or Target. I think the traffic wouldn't be near as heavy and it'd be spread out all day. It wouldn't be centered between six and nine and four and seven. So I think the traffic would be horrendous. I think the garbage issue would be like uh, putting a buffet in front of the, the rats that are currently there. I think our issues with rats would drastically go up. I think if it was a big box store. 10 seconds, sir. They're, they're, um, <clears throat> they're people, they have employees to maintain those areas. If they don't do their job, they That's fire right. them, put somebody else in. It's, uh, You're all set, sir. You've reached your two minutes. I appreciate your comments. Thank you for your time and listening. Thank you, sir. Thanks for coming out tonight. We'll take the next petitioner. Or excuse me, the next audience communication person. Your name and address, sir. My name is Bill Schmidt. I live at 29688 McIntyre. Not related to Kathleen. <laughs> um, there's, there's nothing like this development within miles. There's nothing in Section 36 or in Section 35. Ms. Toy, anything in Section 34? Sir. How about 33? No? How about Section 25? 26? Section 27, 28, my point is, is that for miles around, there is not a similar kind of development, nothing. The closest thing is way up on five mile. This does not belong in a single family home neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other audience communication? Would the okay. Again, I'm going to ask you to be ready. Sir, your name and address, please. Hi there. Merlin Smith, 30039 Richland in Livonia. Uh, first off, I'd like to start. Could I have everybody for non-rezoning this stand not, up? Excuse me, sir. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do that? No, okay. we're not. You can address the council. Then. All right. You sure show a lot of stuff then. You got enough to vote on this tonight. It's been going on for almost two years. Please don't send it to a committee. Okay? Us residents have been going through this for two years now. You got enough. I, I can tell by what everybody was saying, which I could hardly hear. The speakers are stinky. You got enough to vote on it tonight. Either put it through or deny it. There's only one cast in the vote here, or you know, that's gonna make the decision. And we all know who that is, okay? So we have a lot of residents here showing. And the only other thing I have to say is what happened to family first in Livonia. Thank you, sir. Next. Any other audience communication? Good evening, ma'am. State your name and address, please. Good evening, Victoria Kowaleski, 29960 Orange Lawn, abutting the property that the petitioners are requesting rezoning for. In my prepared remarks for the last meeting, I had typed the following. Personally, I think it's quite possible that Walmart at Wonderland Village isn't performing as expected. 
and a tri-level apartment complex in my backyard will yield more sales slash customers. That's neither here nor there, just a bit of musing on my part. But lo and behold, when we met last, one of the petitioner's reps said that the apartment complex will help the neighboring businesses survive. Please note, the petitioner is making money from those neighboring businesses. So again, I say, this is all about the petitioner's pocket. Not about our neighborhood, not about Livonia first, family first. It's about his pocket. Thank you so much. Have a blessed night, and I appreciate my counsel. Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else? Okay, normally what we do if there's a lot of people who want to speak is try and line up behind the podium so we can go one after the other here. Your name, sir? Good evening. Uh, my name is Daniel Poluski, 28500 Cleveland. Uh, I just want to say that um, would you build something like that behind your house? Ask yourself that. Would you want to get out on Saturday afternoon with your kids and look at a big building or deal with 200, 300 car traffic or any matters of that? I think if these guys really want to help the community, build something like an indoor soccer arena or something like a golf to attract the people that live in the city to want to stay in the city. As far as me thinking, hey, I want to buy a house in Livonia, well, I don't know. These guys want to put something that's three-story building. I get it. You guys want to make the money for the city. Well, then there's all the ways that will attract to stay, the people to stay in the city. Not, oh my God, what am I thinking now? I want to move out. I don't know what this is going to bring. All I'm thinking is Havoc. That's all. I, I think there are better ways these guys could build something better to make people stay in the city, not make them want to leave. That's all I got to say. Let's have a good night. Thank you, sir. Good evening, ma'am. Your name and address? Um, Charlupu, 29864 Orange Lawn. And um, I'm against it because of the fact that we still, to this day, cannot get anything handled per Walmart with the trucks and everything else coming in. And we've had the law department, we've had everybody, basically the mayors out to our homes to try to handle this Walmart issue, and we still have never accomplished any ish, um, agreement on any of it yet. To this day, we still have trucks that are back there vibrating and doing whatever else. Who knows, I don't care what kind of fences you put up, they are still ways to go around these things and we have people now looking into our yard still can you imagine what's going to happen once they have all these people there they haven't been able to support anything they've said so far so i just i disagree with all of it and if it was your backyard there you go so imagine looking out in your own yard you can use our yards and look to see what you think those would like look like i have pictures of truck drivers on my phone that you can see face to face almost in my back door. So um, let's try to resolve that first before we even say yes to this, please. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I see no audience communication. We'll go petitioner. Is there anything you'd like to address? Yes. Please try to keep it to two minutes if you can. Yes. I just want a quick question of clarification. Uh, Council President. So the materials that we sent in advance, you guys have all reviewed those, so you don't have the intent that you want us to walk through that tonight? No, this, okay. like I said before, this is a non-substantive vote. This is just directing the law department to create something that we would vote on in the future. Okay, perfect, just wanted to make sure. Um, well, thank you everyone, and uh, we appreciate uh, your residents' feedback and council's feedback. So I'll try to keep this brief, uh, and I just kinda wanted to highlight some of the things we have done based on feedback from the council and the residents. Um, there's been a lot of talk um, about the, the dumpsters and you know what that, you know, the rats that had come to that. Um, you know, just to be clear, the dumpsters that are uh, closest to the residents, Walmart and Target owns those, controls those. We have unfortunately no control over that. Um, the dumpsters that we actually do own and control closer to Plymouth and Middlebelt Road where the retail is, we actually have rat traps 
in those dumpsters and we don't have never had a complaint on that. As far as with the dumpsters in the residential, those are multiple weekly pickups and so it really does not allow enough time for anything to fester that attracts wildlife. Um, and then briefly, I just wanted to mention on the security front, because uh, I know that was kind of talked about at prior meetings, is um, we have added the perimeter fencing around the entire site. We are doing the, um, as you saw in the package, the gates that will close after 5 p.m. that are key entry only, so you'll have to be a resident to get through there. And then we also are installing 24 hour 365 high definition um, security video cameras all around the building that are in plain sight so people see them. They have facial recognition software, they have license plate reading software. So in the event, if there is an issue, you know, you get to the bottom of this immediately, it's saved on the cloud for 30 days. So if there's a bad actor, we, you catch them because of all this information and um, obviously that will deter future bad actors. And then lastly, just wanted to touch on briefly on the walkability of making this a mixed use development. Um, I think you all saw in the package all the things that we added, the sidewalks, the brick paved sidewalks, uh, greenery, sit down areas, and it really connects well. So just wanted to add that, thank you. And just, I didn't ask you to state your name and address. Oh, please. I'm sorry. Uh, Jeffrey Shostak, Shostak Brothers, 17800 Laurel Park Place Drive, Livonia. Thank you, sir. Ms. Miller, will you take the vote on this matter? Vice President Toy. Could you repeat the motion again? So the motion at this time is to refer the matter, it's an approving motion to refer the matter to the law department to draft ordinance language. That's it. This is non-substantive. It is not determining well, what will happen that's ultimately. That's debatable, here. but that's okay. Um, no. Council Member Barr. Aye. Council Member Donovic. Aye. Council Member Morgan. No. Council Member McCullough. No. Council Member McIntyre. Aye. President Jolly. Aye. The law department will draft ordinance language that will be voted on at a later date. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Thank you those who have shared comments. That concludes our agenda for this evening. I will go back to council communication. Any communications from the council? Uh, Ms. McIntyre. Thank you, um, Council Member Jolly. At the beginning, I started on a somber note and I wanted to, uh, to not say anything else to um, make sure that we were just focused on extending our condolences to the Angerbreds and family. On a happier note, I'd like to thank the Senior Center folks for an outstanding uh, St. Patrick's Day drive-through luncheon that we had on St. Patrick's Day. And um, again, be, because the guidelines were not to allow a large gathering, they are amazing in what they come up with. And uh, it was an Irish stew, Irish soda bed, Irish soda bread baked by um, uh, Carl, the director of the Senior Center. And we had, I think, over 150 seniors who came through and enjoyed lunch and a cookie and dessert and some special prizes. So thank you to our outstanding team at the Senior Center. Thank you very much. Any closing audience communication on an item that was not on the agenda? Good evening, sir. State your name and address, please. Yes, uh, good evening. Ishmael Terry, um, 9901 West Parkway Street, Detroit, Michigan, and Redford Charter Township. Um, I'm coming today because I'm looking forward to being you guys' next state representative. As you know, the redistricting took place it moved my Rouge area into the Livonia area as well as the Refford Charter Township. So I have 26 years of legislation behind my back. <laughs> I've been doing this since 2000, really, starting from Eastern Michigan all the way down till now. Currently, I sit on the board for the zoning committee for the city of Detroit. So I know all about your rezoning issues that you are going through because we're doing the same exact things in the city of Detroit. Um, let me give you a brief history about me. Starting in 04, I worked with Congressman John Conyers as well as Clyde Cleveland, who is a legend in the city of Detroit as a city council member. Um, countless um, county commissioners. Um, I know Mike Cox for a long time as well. Um, I served up as the community liaison in the Michigan House of Representatives in 04 to 08. And by 08 to 2011, I was chief of staff up there during the appropriation committees 
where George Cushenberry Jr., as well as Jennifer Granholm and Andy Dillon and all the rest, uh, Mike Bishop as well. So I have a long, rich history in legislation. Uh, 2019, where I just currently left as the Legislative Policy Director in the Michigan House of Representatives. So in me, you have a strong representation. I'm going to sit with all of you. As you can tell, I come into your community. Uh, recently, we created a newsletter that gives an opportunity to people in the community to show what you are doing in your neighborhoods. Um, it's, a, it's a great newsletter to have. It's totally free. It allows you to be able to share with everyone in your communities, in your districts. So my name is Ishmael Terry. I'm a guy you really, truly can trust. I have moved money all over this state. I actually had a chance to work in the White House for the My Brother's Keepers initiative to keep um, young black men and young ladies from going to prison and going to college. So I have a long, rich history in this, and I'm asking for your support. I really am. Um, I know it's difficult as it is in this redistricting, but I'll tell you, believe in what I can do. Trust what I can do, because I've shown it year in and year out. So thank you all for having me and my wife, Bridget. She didn't have to be here, but she wanted to support her husband. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you this. I really respect all of you because I've been there before. So thank you all for having me again. Um, you can find me on our website, TeamTerry2022.com. That's, that's TeamTerry2022.com. And look at our okay. platform. Thank you. I got to cut you off. I was going to compliment you there on sticking to three minutes. You came pretty close. <laughs> I know. And then just a couple last words there kind of put you over. Um, any other audience communication? I see none. Uh, I would offer a motion to adjourn. Support. Uh, motion to adjourn from McIntyre. Support from Toy. Uh, Ms. Miller, take the vote, please. Absolutely. Vice President Toy. Aye. Council Member Barr. Aye. Council Member Donovic. Aye. Council Member Morgan. Aye. Council Member McCullough. Aye. Council Member McIntyre. Aye. President Jolly. Aye. The meeting is adjourned. We will reconvene at 842 for the study meeting, and we'll Aye. try and move along through that quickly. Thank you. <laughs>